So what what can an instructor do that that gives them that chance to to have the responsibility for whether they fail or succeed? I think stepping back, you know, one thing is I uh, I avoid punishment at all costs. There's no punishment out here, and I try to avoid reward equally. You get something. It's not a gift for me. It's because you earned it. You it's a gift from yourself. You know that's a that's a consequence of your action. It's a positive one. Um, same thing with with negative consequences. You know, Mother Nature will will provide a consequence whether you want it to or not. I think uh, sometimes she provides it whether you deserve it or not. Whether you deserve it or not, too. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, that's yeah, that's just the fact. You know, and we're out here to protect them from you know keep them safe, but we can also step back and, and let them let them experience that on their own. You know, I I feel like nurture is a good thing. You know and, and you know, I feel like there's a time to maybe be a, a little critical. You, know, you got a kid running out to the street, you're gonna yell at him, you know, stop, come back. We don't have time. We don't have time for that. You have kids that have been over nurtured out here. You know, the helicopter mom. You got kids with just had the most critical people in their lives. They're accountable to so many people in so many different ways, and this is an opportunity for them to be accountable to themselves and to experience their own consequences. And, you know, I think an HI or staff being aware of that, you know, stepping back just a little bit, you know, in the process and stepping into process, and then stepping back, and, you know, practicing that patience, not fixing everything. That's a hard thing to do. I don't, you're right, I don't understand what it's like. I don't understand what it's like to be autistic. I'm not autistic. I have another idea. But that sounds really hard. Just learning those statements is one of the most difficult things because you want to help. You want to fix things. But they've never heard that. You know? like, Here's the plan on how you're going to get fixed or how you're going to get better. I know. I haven't heard anybody just say, like, I just don't know. I'm sorry, that sounds hard. That's a great tool for your for your HI pouch. What's the role of the HI, the head instructor, to the other instructors out here? To the younger, you know, newer instructors? Training and feedback is probably something I put at the top of the list. We're, we're real big on feedback. And, uh, I feel like that facilitates growth in a lot, most of it that happens out here. Um, and then logistics is a huge part of it. It can be difficult at first, especially when you're learning how to interact with kids, and pay attention, supervise. It can be a lot on your plate all at once to be thinking about where we're going to wind up at the end of the week, where we're going to find our water, what our safety concerns are as far as weather, and, um, you know, how far we're going to be hiking and whatnot. So, to handle a lot of that while you, while you're learning, you know, such such a dynamic field and profession. Your focus is on so many things. You have eight kids, and they all have individual needs and different levels of supervision. That's not a lot. To, you know, you kind of just got to jump in the right box. You know, we can train you on a lot of it, but it'll only get you so far. And it's, and it's kind of trial by fire at times. It's, again, it's, it's exciting and it's rewarding, just like it is for the kids. There's so many opportunities out here to grow, and you know we we disrupt behavior patterns, and you're you're immersed in that, 
can some of your behavior patterns get disrupted as well. And it's typically good thing, you know. It's kind of easy in modern society to, to get in a routine and avoid those moments of critical thinking and those moments of anxiety. And it's uh, just like everything else, it's, it's super rewarding. When you do your good, when you do your best, you either fail or succeed, but you get the consequences of your actions. That's it. There's not a whole lot else involved. Do you ever have any experiences as an instructor where you were trying to succeed, but you failed and got value out of that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, you, you kind of have to, you can't really fail too much out here, uh, but you definitely knock on the door and you get faced with it, you know, and you got to look failure right in the eye and <laughs> get real creative real quick, but failing with a kid out here is, you know, you can't fail at safety don't, and you know, we don't, you know, we, we make it, we make it happen no matter what, as far as therapeutically and emotionally, you definitely have your I learned moments, you know, I learned I can't say that, you know, or I can't do that, that's a trigger, you know? but in the end, you gotta process it right, you know, you gotta say like, but if you, if you make a mistake, and you say something wrong, you know, or you say something offensive and you didn't even think about it, it's only offensive in this environment or to this person. Um, you know, did you, did you acknowledge that you made a mistake? Did you talk, apologize? Did you process it with the kid? Did you fail in the end? You know, you know if, you, if you go the wrong route, you know, but you double back, you get on the right trail, and you get the kid to a safe, accessible area. in the end you made it, you know. I've had those moments where I'm like, ah, I don't know if I can go through this private property or ah, I thought I should have hit a trail by now and I did. You know, but in the end, you know, everybody had a warm fire and it came to an accessible campsite, you know, so I think I looked it in the eye a little bit more than I sat back and said I failed, but I've had those learning experiences and I guess those those small defeats in battle, but those victorious moments, you know, in, in war, you know. Talk a little bit about driving. Driving's such a big part of this work, and you've got uh, you know field support managers, you've got field directors, you've got therapists. I, I mean, for the therapist, driving's a huge part of this job. You know, it's a lot of their time is, is driving. Um, for just staff going in and out of the field, there's a lot of there's a lot of dirt road time. So, what's 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 the driving piece of this work? Well, for me, it's it's my moment to take a breath, practice mindfulness, and think about my day to day. Kind of process again, like the position I'm in, it's a ton of logistics. You know, you're de you're de dealing with every department head, and you're dealing with every group. And it's a lot. It's good to have a moment, you know, a moment that a lot of people don't get in their, their daily lives to sit back and just process and prep and then hit the ground running again. Is doing this. There's a lot to it. You know, a lot of people have never been on dirt roads. Conditions like this, it's a lot of training and uh, safe practices that go into this vehicle maintenance. But you get out of it what you can. It's a my opportunity to communicate with. 
stuff on the other ship. That's one of my favorite favorite times when I'm driving, you know, the opposite shift in or out of the field. Uh, I love it. It's such a precious time. You know, it's an hour and a half that I get with people that I normally don't have any time with to maybe pass on some knowledge or learn something or just connect, you know, help them feel more connected to the company and work on buying. <laughs> What's the most challenging thing about driving in, in your field area? Um, I'd, I'd tie it between conditions, you know, a little rain and it can get, it can get real messy, you know, a little snow and it can, it can close the trail down, you know, that is at a half an hour to where you need to be. Um, and then other drivers. People aren't always, they're not always respectful. And we're aware of that. We're very aware of that. Uh, you know, so we take it extra slow out there and give them plenty of room to, to take a, a turn too fast. Um, you know, take up too much of the road. What are some tips on driving in the mud? Respond quickly. <laughs> you know, there's some that people tell you, you know, turn into your skin and whatnot, but if you're not on top of it right away, uh, your back end will get ahead of you, and it won't matter if you do the right thing with the steering wheel. So uh, go, go slower than you think you need to, and when you feel your back end move, uh, respond right away. A perfect amount. Do it right without any experience. So, that would be my best thing. Respond quickly and, and appropriately. You can't overcorrect, but you get on top of it right away. You'll find that you stay on the road more than you find yourself on the side of the road. How's that like working with kids? Um, as far as in the vehicle? No. Uh, like as far as being oh, stuck like there in the field, re huh? Respond quickly and appropriately, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about go slower than you think you need to? That's again, yeah, that's a big one. Patience is, uh, again, that's one of your best tools. You know, slow down a little and uh, correct just just that right amount. You know, just like with empathy, you want to solve all the problems right away, but sometimes just that little bit of, of uh, that sounds hard, a little bit of reflecting. You know, we don't have to solve all the problems today. They didn't get them all in one day either. Be fair to say if the kid spent six years developing bad habits, let's spend six years breaking those habits, and that's not the case. You know, we do we work wonders in just a couple months, you know, but we still got a couple months. We don't have to do it all. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. The Primitivus Project is made possible by the generous sponsorship of Wingate Wilderness Therapy. To learn more, visit wingatewildernesstherapy.com.